It was very exciting to get back, knowing how much fun we had on the first one, and that this one, we all kind of been there before, so we were really we're just going to enjoy it. We had the stories we thought um, were right this time, finally, after all this time, but also the cast just seemed like it just kept coming and coming. The ideal cast. It was yeah. all... It, it's one of those, if something like that happens to you, there's, there's no one there to be with you when you pinch yourself, you know. Yeah. There's both of us there to be going, can you believe how great and how lucky we're getting yeah. with this cast? And, and, you know, he knows how much Sin City means to me, but I know much more how, what it means to him to have written these characters so long ago, never knowing it was going to be a movie. And at some <clears throat> moments, an actor pulls off a very iconic line or scene, and you could just tell this realization, like, <clears throat> Oh my God! It just came to life. You know that feeling. Was, I, I felt it, and it wasn't even my creation; it was his. But I could feel it for him, and go see him, and see him with this big smile on his face. I mean, it was pretty. Little miracles like that every day, where of, of yeah. this thing coming to life, after so long ago that he wrote them, in a vacuum in a room, just for himself, and now everybody's playing those parts. It's pretty amazing. And there'd be lines that would, when I would be writing them, and you know. Um, lettering them in, into the word balloons where I would have no idea what they'd really sound like. If someone, you know, ex except inside my head, well, or you, when I walked around the room and, 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 and uh, recited them to myself. And you're reciting them, though, for a completely different medium. So it's yeah. not like any screenwriter who, any screenwriter is going to have this dream that, oh, maybe someday De Niro will say my dialogue. I mean, he never even thought that because it was never going to go to an actor. It was only for the comic medium. As a matter of fact, um, I, I started... Um, Sin City ab absolutely determined to do the one comic book that could not be adapted into a movie. Mm -hmm. Then he showed up. So you couldn't even say it was, <laughs> so you couldn't even say it was a dream come true because he never had that dream. He just yeah. has this realization that suddenly it's happening. <clears throat> and it's like, wow, hearing it in a different medium with actors. It was thrilling, and that's what brought us back for another one. And I think that's why we enjoyed this time even more, just, just knowing that it could yeah. happen again. You could capture another to kind of lightning in a bottle if you get all those creative forces together yeah. on something that's just such an amazing classic work that Sin City is. People would say right away, are you going to do a sequel? How are you going to make it different? I thought, well, the first thing, we'll make it closer to the book. But second, we'll also do it in 3D. I, I wanted to do Sin City in 3D, but I had just done the very first digital 3D movie just before this, and that was Spy Kids 3D. There was only two digital screens um, in the whole country. That's how much stuff has changed in 10 years. Yeah. So it would have had to be like red and blue glasses, so that wasn't going to work. Um, so I didn't get to do it, but I did think about post-converting it at some point, because it just felt like a graphic novel would lend itself m better to 3D, especially almost like panels, you know, in three dimensions. So um, uh, fortunately, you know, by the time we shot, finally shot this movie, the fact off the factory line were Jim Cameron's and Vince Pace's latest cameras, which were like Ferraris. I mean, those things were awesome compared to the mop buckets I had way back in the day when I first was trying to create digital 3D. And it uh, was a huge leap forward, and um, the movie looks really, really nice because of that. Yeah, at first, at first I was reticent because um, 3D to me meant lots of things flying at you all the time. Um, you know, dinosaurs, aliens, whatever you want to, you know, <laughs> uh, list. It would be things constantly flying off the screen. But what Robert demonstrated was that the way I tell a story is is to is to break things down to the simplest elements to 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 convey to the um, audience what um, I want them to understand about the story. And so the stuff was much more vignetted. And, and, and lent itself much more to the process.